dear students i welcome you to this lecture today let us discuss john dewey we will try to understand the general philosophy of john dewey as well as his educational philosophy john dewey an unparalleled philosopher and educationist has been able enough to influence the whole world through his ideas the author of the classics school and society child and the curriculum schools tomorrow and democracy and education is a much translated writer in many languages of the world initially influenced by hegel's idealism he was very much influenced by the ideas of william james and herbert spencer he has been regarded as a widely traveled person as he was invited to japan china turkey and russia to give his suggestions regarding the organization of education it was in 1919 when he delivered a series of lectures at the imperial university of tokyo later these lectures were published in a book form named reconstruction in philosophy john dewey was an american philosopher psychologist and educational reformer whose ideas have been influential in education and social reform dewey is one of the primary figures associated with the philosophy of pragmatism and is considered one of the founders of functional psychology a well known public intellectual he was also a major voice of progressive education and liberalism although dewey is best known for his publications about education he also wrote about many topics including epistemology metaphysics aesthetics art logic social theory and ethics the most important theme in dewey's works was his profound belief in democracy be it in politics education or communication and journalism dewey himself stated in 1988 democracy and the one ultimate ethical ideal of humanity are to my mind synonymous reflecting his immense influence on 20th century thought hilda nietby in 1953 wrote dewey has been to our age what aristotle was to the later middle ages not a philosopher but the philosopher now let us see what are the important concepts of john dewey first reflective thinking perhaps the most important single emphasis of john dewey is his insistence upon applying reflective or critical inquiry to problems according to him thinking is meaningful only when it is related to problems of life and their solutions out of the five steps of reflective inquiry first one is the appearance of the problem or you may call it recognition of the problem in this very first step problem is realized when something goes wrong for example if belief system is questioned or acting upon it leads to a conflict the second step or phase is the clarification of the problem through analysis or observation data is gathered and problem is defined for example if a belief is disputed questioned or analysis may indicate what precisely is in dispute then there is formulation of tentative to solution of the problem or you may call it generation of hypothesis it is the third step deductive elaboration is the fourth step of reflective inquiry here we reason out the implications of various hypotheses one by one and finally select the usable one the fifth step is that of verification hypotheses are tested in this step on the basis of collected data if one of the hypotheses works out the indeterminate situation is replaced by a terminate one and solution is found the implications of reflective inquiry are recognized in all the research works today 
knowledge and experience. Knowledge is what we attain in the context of problematic situation. Thus, it is inferred from the five steps of reflective inquiry which involves operation of controlled observation, experimentation and testing. Thus, knowledge is always inferential according to Dewey. Experience is one of the central concepts in Dewey's thought occurring and recurring throughout his writings. To him, experience is an interaction between a living being and his physical and social environment. The important trait of experience is that it is always connected with future. Our future action is improved through experience. Thus, it is testing and verification of hypothesis for future improvement of life. On this basis, we can say that there is no distinction between knowledge and experience. Only that knowledge and experience which is useful for the individual and the society is considered as real and accurate by John Dewey. Now, his conception of philosophy. In The Need for a Recovery of Philosophy, Dewey declares that philosophy must cease to be a device for dealing with the problems of philosophy and become a method cultivated by philosophers for dealing with the problems of men. The function of philosophy is not to know the world but to control and reform it by solving the problems of men. It should adjust the body of traditional beliefs to scientific tendencies and political aspirations which are novel and incompatible on every day. Thus, philosophy should understand the problems which are arising due to arising conflicts between democracy, business and science and try to solve them by using reflective inquiry. The task of philosophy is to clarify men's mind regarding the social and moral issues of the world which are always changing with time. To Dewey, philosophy is nothing but a general theory of criticism whose task is to criticize and clarify human culture, values and beliefs and redefine it. Now, experimentalism. Dewey's experimentalism relates to his analysis of reflective inquiry for which hypothesis, prediction and experimentation are central. An experiment is a design of action to determine consequences. It is a way of introducing intelligence into a situation. Dewey believed that we are living in a hostile environment and we have to adjust ourselves there. Experiment will help us to discover the procedures of the adjustment in the society by eradicating its ills and securing goods. Thus, the experimentation is not restricted to biological or physical levels of the individuals only but covers the whole spectrum of the society. Now let us see what is his instrumentalism all about. Dewey's instrumentalism also stems from his analysis of reflective inquiry. Ideas are not copies images or visions of external objects, but rather tools or instruments to facilitate an organism's behavior to think so. They are instruments for operating on things or on stimuli. Ideas are only the instruments through which we operate on physical objects. Thus, they are the means to reach the ends. The more we lay citrus on ends, the greater we will pay attention to the means. So, the separation of goods into natural and moral have harmful consequences. The conceptualization of goods depends upon the ideas or instruments with which they are treated. There is no scope of permanent or predetermined truth or morality. It is changeable with time, place or circumstances depending upon the instrument with which they are treated for. For example, homosexual marriage may be considered a sin today, but 
will it remain a sin tomorrow is a big question. Same is true for all concepts of natural sciences as well. The John Dewey believes in the philosophy of social change which is inevitable and it will also bring about change in the social and moral problems. Now, relativism. Dewey's relativism is quite against to absolutism. It is the way of stressing the importance of context, situation and relationships. To take the things out of relations is to deprive them of value and meaning as he views it. Nothing is absolute in this world. Poverty is stated in the context of richness. Theory is significant in the context of experimentation. So, unqualified generalization is misleading. A knife may be good of sharpening pencil and bad for cutting a rope. But to speak of it without qualifications as good or bad is quite misleading. An economic policy or a plan of action may be good in relation to a particular time and situation, but it may be absurd in relation to other situations. On the basis of these ideas, he did not believe in any divine power. He rather believed in strong power of man who could choose his own path for his progress and development. Now, let us understand his views about humanism. According to D.V., knowledge is tested by the promotion of human intelligence based on the experience of modern science for the sake of bettering modern situation. Knowledge obtained from revealed religions does not have any role to play in the practical life of man. Only experiment-based knowledge can do something for the welfare of man. So, it is our duty to conserve, transmit, rectify and expand our heritage of values so that our next generation may share it more generously and securely. Education and experience. Most of the major themes in Dewey's general philosophy find expression in his philosophy of education. A reflective view is as central for education on his view as for any other phase of life or experience. Indeed, for him, education is a problem-solving process and we learn by doing, by having an opportunity to react in real-life situations. In education, not indoctrination but inquiry is focal. Not simply amazing facts but learning to apply intelligence to problem-solving has top priority. Education must be experimental without being simply improvisation. The reconstructive purpose is as much at work in education as anywhere else in experience. As he puts in Democracy and Education, one of the classic books, education is a constant reorganizing and reconstructing of experience. Present experience must be so guided as to make future experience more meaningful and worthwhile. Though the values and the knowledge of the past are transmitted, this must be done in such a fashion as to broaden, deepen and otherwise improve them. Criticism and not simply passive acceptance is demanded. DV equates education and growth. As teachers, we start with the child where he now is with his present stock of interests and knowledge and seek to help him expand and enrich both his interests and his knowledge and grow as a person in his community and society. He learns to work responsibility for his own development. Education must not be simply a means to something else. It should not be merely preparation for the future. As a process of growth, it should have its own enjoyable and intrinsically rewarded features and at the same time, it should help further continued education. On DV's view, 
the test of our social institutions may be found in their affecting furthering continued education or growth. His humanism is richly exemplified in his account of the theory and practice of education. His philosophy of education stresses the social nature of education, its intimate and multiple relations to democracy and its cultural significance. The views of John Dewey on education. John Dewey is one of the most influential thinkers in the history of modern educational theory. John Dewey is nothing less than a revolutionary of modern education. His ideas and approaches to schooling were revolutionary ideas during his lifetime and remain fundamentally important to modern schooling today. John Dewey is probably most famous for his role in what is called progressive education. Progressive education is essentially a view of education that emphasizes the need to learn by doing. Dewey believed that human beings learn through a hands-on approach. This places Dewey in the educational philosophy of pragmatism. Pragmatists believe that a reality must be experienced. From Dewey's educational point of view, this means that students must interact with their environment in order to adapt and learn. According to Dewey, Education aims at the development of all those capacities in the individual which will enable him to control his environment and fulfill his capacities. Dewey felt that the same idea was true for teachers and that teacher and students must learn together in a collaborative manner. His view of the classroom was deeply rooted in democratic ideas which promoted equal voice among all participants in the learning experience. According to Dewey, the function of education is to help growing of helpless young animal into a happy, moral and efficient human being. Dewey did not believe in confining education just to certain aims. He believed that education should aim at the stimulation of the child's power through the social medium. Since the interest and the capabilities of the children differ from child to child, education cannot grow according to set aims. This will hamper the proper growth of their personality. It should only aim at the growth of the innate nature of the immature child as to help him to be able to live up to the social standards and the demands that are made upon him. Terming it differently, it should aim at social efficiency. John Dewey believed that school is a socio-psychological necessity. According to Dewey, psychological element is the basis of education and on the basis of the innate tendencies of the child the education should be shaped and organized. In other words, it is essential that the interest and the tendencies of the child should be first studied and then education should be framed accordingly. He believed in the universal education and providing opportunity to every individual to grow according to his or her interest and capabilities. Dewey laid greater emphasis on the social aspect of education. School is a social necessity because it has to provide for the education of the child as a member of the society. To his belief, all education proceeds by the participation of the individual in the social consciousness of the race and therefore the aim of education should be to create an atmosphere by active participation in which the child may take part in the social consciousness of the race. Since man is a social animal, it is necessary that his instincts, interest and personality should grow in a social atmosphere. Dewey believed that school is a society in miniature and so he also thought 
that in school all such activities that one has to face in society must be centralized. His life at school should not be isolated from society. He should learn all those things at school that he has to face after going out of the school in society. This will help him to face the bigger and more complicated problems of life. Really speaking, the school should aim at developing those ideas in the child which will be of use to him in his actual life. The child should be enriched with such experiences that will be useful for the society and the child himself as a member of the society. He did not believe that school is preparation for life. Rather, he stressed that it is actually life. Davy's pragmatic and democratic approach to schooling may not stand out uh, as radical today, but in the early and mid 90s, his view of education was in contradiction to much of the then present system of schooling. Davy's approach was truly child centered. A child centered approach to education places the emphasis of learning on the needs and interests of the child. In Dewey's view, children should be allowed to explore their environments. He believed in an interdisciplinary curriculum or a curriculum that focuses on connecting multiple subjects where students are allowed to freely move in and out of classrooms as they pursue their interests and construct their own paths for acquiring and applying knowledge. The role of the teacher in this setting would be to serve more as a facilitator than an instructor. In Dewey's view, the teacher should observe the interests of the students, observe the directions they naturally take and then serve as someone who helps develop problem-solving skills. Dewey's views match with other developmental theorists like Piaget, Brunner, Montessori and Vygotsky. Jan Piaget and John Dewey are the two main contemporaries who developed the precise idea of constructivism. To Piaget, children build knowledge through what they do and experience. Teachers need to provide problem-solving challenges, not just give out information. The teacher's job is to nurture inquiry. Children create knowledge through interaction between their experiences and ideas. Brunner's theoretical framework supports the believe that learners construct new ideas or concepts based upon existing knowledge. The process of learning is active and involves transformation of information, deriving meaning from experience, framing or constructing hypotheses and decision making. Learners are considered to be creators and thinkers through the use of inquiry and the role of experience in learning. The Montessori pedagogy encourages creative problem solving skills. It encourages individual creativity when solving problems, teaches independence and supports the development of self-control with the teacher assuming the role of a facilitator. Vygotsky's is a social constructivist approach which emphasizes the social context of learning and the constructs of knowledge through social interaction. Children need opportunities to learn with the teacher and more skilled peers. Teachers serve as facilitators, not directors. While each of these theorists had their own perspective on human development, they shared a common belief with Dewey's progressive approach of education which emphasizes on facilitating the 
development of the natural tendencies and potential of the child. Traditionally, a teacher would stand in front of a group of students who are all sitting in rows. The teacher is usually the deliverer of information and the job of the students is usually to receive this information and use it during the days of exams. In contrast, in a classroom based on the ideas of John Dewey, you may see a teacher deliver background content information, but you would also likely see students working in groups with those groups exploring differing concepts within the content. You would see lots of conversation and lots of collaboration. While you may see a written test, you may also see student projects, presentations or other differentiated techniques of evaluation. Dear students, it was all for today's session, hoping that you might have understood it and enjoyed it. Thank you.